My name is Robin Fennick, and we're from, I'm from the Gamma Gamma chapter, and we're going to talk about concordia sensei. So to start off, why do we, why do, we do science? Um, what really got us into science? And so a lot of times, um, many of us had that early pivotal science experience. And that made us really become passionate about science. So maybe you became passionate out in the field, doing field work, or in the lab, doing lab work um, when you were little. And so that brings me to the importance of hands-on STEM experiences. So basically just getting children of all ages just super engaged in the sciences. And so to summarize a quote from McClure, um, children just have a natural readiness for STEM. They're um, constantly you know, building with blocks or out in the garden or just being inquisitive out in nature. So they show an absolute readiness for STEM learning. Um, also, it's just really important to keep new generations interested in STEM. STEM fuels our world and it forwards our generation, whether it's in technology or um, new biological things. Um, another quote, some Asian quote from Iwali, um, basically talks about how the essence of STEM education is so important to forwarding our workforce in America and throughout um, the world. But are there hindrances or barriers providing science to everyone? And yes, there are. Um, so there are many barriers for science outreach. One of them is location. So um, just making sure that we have a wide range, we're, we're bringing science to a wide range of audiences, whether that's in rural towns or wherever that is. Um, costs. Many available science experiences can be expensive. And so um, that can limit your range of audiences that you're bringing science to. Also, developmental and physical disabilities. Um, Traditional science outreach can be challenging for many of those individuals to do, such as um, just bench work and lab work. And so um, how do we make that accessible to them? Uh, language barriers. So communication can create a gap between the scientists and young people if they've never been exposed to science before. So how do we make that um, accessible to them? And lastly, uninterested science instructors. So many instructors are intimidated by STEM um, or are willing to teach it. So how do we, how do we um, make them more comfortable with STEM? Okay, so what is Concordia Science Academy? Um, Concordia Science Academy was started to provide exciting educational hands-on experiences um, to children K through 12 in the Fargo Martin area. So just focusing on um, these awesome science experiences and getting them really interested in science. Um, these experiences included all the sciences, so chemistry, biology, physics, and math. And um, our earliest events started with these large carnival-style programs. <coughs> So looking at our official mission statement for Concordia Science Academy, the mission of Concordia Science Academy is to provide an educational, entertaining, hands-on science experience for children of all ages in the fargo Morehead area and beyond. But we also have an unofficial mission statement, um, just making science available for everyone, so just getting it out there. So the evolution of Science Academy. Um, so We've been doing those carnival style programs for a long time, and we were just trying, we were questioning, is this really impacting um, the wide range of audiences we want to impact with science? Um, so we started creating new workshops for a more immersive science experience and really opening our range of um, kids for um, putting science to. Uh, one of these is Great Science for Teens at the Farmer Public Library. Um, this brings just a lot of, of kids. So it's mainly teenagers, and some of them can be homeschooled, or some of them are out of town, and um, we just do these really immersive um, science experiments with them at the library in town. Also, building relationships with community organizations um, is important to providing these science, science experiences as well, and um, those are a, just a few of our organizations that we collaborate with. Um, and last year, in 2016, we reached over 4,000 children, and so that's pretty awesome. So what makes a Concordia Science Academy experience? So what makes this um, super cool? Um, we make science really hands-on. Um, making science hands-on for children is, um, it makes them, it makes them easier to understand the science. Also getting kids active. Um, making science very interactive is important for children, just getting up and up and going. Um, enabling children to explore the curiosities. Just being comfortable with asking why. Um, and then being able to channel that into hypotheses and um, being able to sort of test them. And so here are a few pictures of our um, types of experiences. So just a couple of our different experiments, and we do fire, which is pretty awesome. And um, yeah, and everyone has fun with it. So when looking at me and Concordia Science Academy, how did I become interested? 
So I took general chemistry um, freshman year. And I've always just been, I've had an uh, endless love for the sciences. I've always been so inquisitive about science and biology and chemistry. And so in Gen Chem, I overheard my professor, Dr. Wiley, talking about um, Science Academy and how, um, how we were getting science out there to kids. And I just got really excited. I was like, oh, I want to do this. And so um, also, I like getting young girls interested in the sciences. I know one of my elementary school teachers um, really stressed STEM in um, my fifth grade class. and. Um, that really got me interested in science. And I think it's important for young girls to also be interested in, not be afraid of the sciences. Um, so my role in the Science Academy, I'm the, one of the student leaders, I'm the vice president. And so I organize, prepare, and participate in most, if not all, the events. Um, and then why do I still participate? Um, I just love seeing the, our, the kids' faces just light up when we do these awesome science experiments. They're like, whoa, that's so cool. You know, and like seeing reactions happen is pretty awesome. And so, Community Science Academy is like a catalyst. Um, in a perfect world, everyone would be experiencing great science, but unfortunately this does not happen. Um, there are always barriers impeding the opportunity for having a positive science outreach experience for everyone. And so, Concordia Science Academy could remain unchanged and we could still do those carnival style programs and still not um, be limiting our audience, but instead we are developing and actually trying to reduce these barriers and achieve science for everyone. So briefly revisiting the barriers before we go more in depth into them, the location, cost, developmental physical disabilities, language, and uninterested science instructors. So looking at barrier one, um, how are we reaching out beyond the FM area? Um, that can be tough sometimes. It's a tough problem to tackle. Um, if they can't come to science, how can we bring that to them? How are we making that possible? So um, one of the main ways that we do this is having Concordia students serve as science ambassadors to their hometown. So many, many of the students at Concordia College are maybe like an hour or two hours away from the campus. And so we use these student connections to create more opportunities and just bring science everywhere. Um, a couple of examples include when we go to um, all day elementary school visits um, throughout North Dakota, Minnesota. Um, and then also, we're also invited. Um, our group can be pretty popular and so we just get um, invited to do some events throughout the um, upper Midwest area. So barrier two is um, costs. Many science outreach um, programs can be expensive and so um, you can limit your audience um, to maybe more you know, middle range people and you're eliminating those low income individuals who still have just as much opportunity to be interested in science and do awesome in the sciences, but they're limited because some of these programs can be expensive. Um, and some of them are just run to make a profit, but Concordia Science Academy is very inexpensive to run and we never charge for our science experiences. So we open our range of audiences just to a wider area. Um, also, most of our experiments can be done with household materials. And then um, we have an awesome anonymous donor who covers a lot of our operating costs. So some, uh, one of these examples, a couple of these examples of um, bringing science to low-income people. Um, one of them is we partner with the Salvation Army during the summer. So they will bring, um, they'll bring like a lunch when the kids, because the kids are out of school, so they'll bring a lunch for the kids and then we bring the science. And so they get to have a great healthy meal and then they also get to have fun and learn. Also, we work with Churches United. It's one of our homeless shelters in town. And so um, some of the kids from the residents who are at Churches United, they will get bused into Concordia, and we'll just do some lab activities with them for an hour or so. And they just have a wonderful time. And then there's a picture of our Salvation Army program. So barrier three, how are we accommodating for people with disabilities, um, whether that's physical or developmental? So a lot of science can be difficult um, for these types of people. So we want to make it accessible to everyone and make it accessible for people with disabilities. Um, so we redesign our experiments. We make them more um, hands-on and um, very visual. And so it just makes them easier to get involved in the science and understand it. Some of our audiences that we've reached include um, individuals with autism, Down syndrome, um, various cognitive delays, and also some physical impairments such as hearing loss or um, deafness. A couple of our programs that have involved disabled individuals include um, deaf, hard of hearing students in the FM area. So this is a program, of, program we're currently developing right now and we hope to do this um, soon to work with them and just collaborate with um, making the science very visual um, and so they can work with us. 
Also, um, the Ann Carlson Techno Camp, that was, there was a wide variety of people with uh, bubble disabilities there, and it was like a summer camp. And so uh, we brought the science there and made it very hands on and tangible for them. So here are a couple pictures from the Techno Camp. Um, they had a wonderful time. Um, yeah, and they were very excited and happy and got really engaged, and um, they love it. They love the hands on activities. So, our fourth barrier is language. Um, scientific, scientific terminology, as you guys all know, can be challenging to native English speakers, but can you imagine how hard that is for people who are non, non native English speakers? So, English is their second language, so they're learning English. Um, and so, we try to involve students and community organizations with backgrounds in other languages. So, outreach will happen through a combination of our science and their translation, so just bringing together um, everyone and doing everything. Um, an example of this includes our English language learner program, which is also um, under development. And uh, we just want to bring science to people who are, um, you know, learning English. Our fifth barrier, um, our last one, is uninterested science instructors. So at the K-12 level, many instructors feel uncomfortable teaching STEM. Um, this can unfortunately inhibit children from being exposed to all areas of science throughout the through K-12. Um, and then another quote from me, Wally. Um, so 28% of the U.S. public school teachers who are teaching science in the grades 7 through 12 don't have a background in the sciences, which is really unfortunate. So that makes them uncomfortable um, tackling science programs um, and math, and um, then that limits the child from um, ex experiencing the sciences. So Science Academy counters this by providing examples of passionate and inspiring scientists. So just um, bringing together our volunteers from Concordia and just seeing that they're excited in the sciences makes the kids excited and sees and that, that exposes them to um, STEM not being hard. Like it's, a, it's an awesome program. And so here are some of our awesome scientists. Um, we have a lot of programs like this. Yeah. And so back to revisiting the mission statement. Um, we are holding true to our mission statement, but we recognize that there's more to be done. So um, just making Science Academy flexible and improving Concordia Science Academy's reach, whether that's through um, going to different locations, um, you know, coming to a wide range of audiences, um, and just overcoming those barriers. Um, they always face us, but we always overcome them, and we always bring the science. So in conclusion, Concordia Science Academy has the unofficial mission statement of science for everyone, um, but through developing new programs and keeping our current programs um, going, um, we bring the science to everyone, to all um, individuals. And so for my acknowledgments, I um, just want to acknowledge Dr. Graham Wiley, aka the Science Guy, um, fellow peers of Science Academy, just are volunteers at Concordia. <coughs> They're wonderful and they do a lot of awesome volunteering work with us. Um, Concordia College for their support and resources, our anonymous donor, our community organizations, um, all of the young scientists that come and enjoy science with us, they all have a wonderful time. And then Sigma Zeta for letting me present. Thank you. take from this anonymous donor to keep you all running? <laughs> um, rough, rough number? Um, it really just depends. Um, it just depends on what our stock's looking like. We really, we can go from spending $5 in a month to like $1,000 in a month. So it just depends like, if we want to expand our kits, like our science experiments, or if they're still going, we don't need anything. It just depends on how many events we've done that month. So we always have um, a good range of income to come. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to try this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was curious. If, so you you range from five to a thousand dollars a month demand in terms of replenishing uh, supplies and such. So does that mean you're going out every week, every month? How? What What is your schedule like? In terms our of experiences. Yeah, it just really varies. It just depends on like how many people want us and how many um, like. 
barriers we're reaching to. So sometimes we can have three or four events in a week, or some, some weeks we don't have any. So it just really depends. Um, and just how it, the events are steadily increasing in numbers because we're getting really popular. We've been on TV quite a few times in the FM area, and so people are really liking our, our program. So we're getting more popular. But. Yeah, I guess when you mentioned the TV thing, I was I was talking with um, Dr. Wiley, and could you explain a little bit more? Have you, have you been on television with with him? Yeah, I've been on TV right? four times now. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty great. And I just love this microphone. This is so much fun. <laughs> Um, could you explain that experience a little bit? I think we're, we have a couple minutes. Yeah, we do. So. Um, yeah, so like um, one, of the, one of the recent ones I did, it was like an early morning program, and so we had like five snippets of time. So like, um, I don't know, there were like three two-minute segments, and then I think two longer segments. I forget. Um, but we just like, we just do full science experiments, and we just show them the process, and kind of get the anchors interactive in it. Oh, yeah. and, yeah, and so it's it's really awesome. So, but a lot of them, a lot of the other ones are just where we go to the studio, and um, it's like a four minute segment or whatever. And we usually try to do a theme. So maybe it's like a holiday around like Christmas or something. We'll do like a theme with the science. Like we did um, a St. Patty's Day theme last time we were on TV. So that's pretty cool. So, yeah. It's very I just want to use the thing as well. <laughs> For those people who are interested, you might want to Google North Dakota Today and Concordia Science Academy. 